G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another C Sharp tutorial, this time looking at event driven programming. In this video I'm going to have a look at the difference between two different GUI programs you can use, some basic controls that you're probably going to use in every project, and then event code itself with some examples at the end. Now I do want to stick to 10 minutes so I'm going to brush over a few things, but we'll do more detail later on. So to start with, having a look at our new project dialog here, there's two types of GUI programs that you can start with. A WPF or a Windows Forms app, sometimes called WinForms. Now, I would always, always, always use WPF app over the top of WinForms from now until the future, mainly because of the features and the more modern stylings of a WPF app. And the reason is, Windows Forms app have been around for a long, long time, and they use a technology called GDI to draw their windows and their buttons and their lists and things like that. GDI stands for Graphical Device Interface and it's a library of code that Microsoft created just to draw things. And now it's good, it's a functional library, it does things. However, it lacks a lot of features like styling and skinning programs, having graphical effects and things like that. A WPF app is using what's called DirectX instead of GDI. And if you don't know DirectX, DirectX is used by lots and lots of game companies around the world to draw 3D graphics and graphical effects. So WPF uses that, so it gives us the ability to do different graphical effects, skin our apps very easily, and it also gives you access to XAML. Now, I'll talk more about XAML in the next video, but I absolutely love it, and that's one of the reasons why I stick to WPF so much. So from this point, let's create a new program, and let's have a look at the basic controls that you're probably going to use. So let's call it event driven, if I can spell, programs. All right, so you're going to need the toolbox for this one here, and I'm going to simply click on that, and I'm going to pin it to my sidebar so I can see it the whole time. The most basic controls you're going to use are obviously under the common controls. There are a lot more if you have a look down here, but I don't want to focus on them today. I just want to look at some very basic ones. The pointer is what you use to obviously design your interface, move things around, resize them, whatever like that. But underneath we have something as simple as a button, which allows us to put code under it when the user clicks on it. That's the simple behavior of a button. As we go down, we have a checkbox, which allows the user to tick the box. And generally speaking, you don't really add code to a checkbox unless you want it to fire off when they tick or untick a box. Coming down, you have images. I'm not going to use them today. I'm going to dedicate a whole video to them. As we go, list boxes are great for listing certain items on the page. And to add items to a list box, you come over and use the items property. Okay, and I'll quickly add two items. If I change this from a button to a list box item, I have no idea why everything is twice there. I'm going to click once and twice. And to add words inside your list box item, you scroll down until you see content. Put banana in the second one. And I'll put an apple in the first one. And I'm going to hit OK. And you see I've got two items within my list box. Moving down from the list, we have radio buttons, which are really good for allowing the user to only select one of something. The more you add, the user can generally, whoop, did not mean to do that. The user can generally only select one of those buttons. You can set it up so there's two sections of radio buttons on one form. That's not a big issue, but I'm not going to go through that. This is probably the most common one. A text block allows you to just put text on the screen. And I change that by changing, or I change the words by changing the text property. So I might go, welcome to my program. And plain and simple, and you can even go to the text section, change how big it is. Whoop, that's way too big apparently. Keep going. You can make it bold, you can change the color, you can do, oh, that's not where the color is, color's in appearance. And you can do lots of other things with it. Okay. And the final one, which is definitely the second most common after the text block, is going to be a text box, because it allows the user to enter words. And again, the content of that is controlled by the text property, just over here. Now, if I hit play, all of these controls are going to have their default Windows behavior because Microsoft have developed these for you to be nice and common, really. And if I click on these, the list box items get selected. I can tick and untick the checkbox. I can type inside the text box. I can only select one of these radio buttons at a time, and I can click on the button. Okay. 
So the way we attach code to all of these objects is under what you called events. Now in console programming, we had what's called a sequential based programming language. So that means that we start on line one, and then we go to line two, to three, to four, and then we just keep going until we get to the last line of our program. Now, the difference here is that event-driven programming, everything has to be based on when something happens. So when the user ticks a box, or when the user types inside a text box, or when the user clicks on a button, okay? That is where you attach the majority of your code, all right? And the way you work with this, okay? Let's say, for example, the simplest one is a button. I wanna add some code under my button. The first thing I'd always recommend is give your button a name before you do anything to do with code. So button, um, hello, something like that. Okay, obviously I'd give it a better name if there was a purpose to this button, but there is no purpose to this button. And the way you attach code, and you can either double click on the outside of the button where my cursor is, or the best way I reckon is to go to the lightning bolt tab, and these are all the events that you can add code to. There is a lot of stuff that you can add code to. The basic and the most important one is click. Okay, so that handles when the user clicks with the mouse. It also handles when they press the enter key or the space bar. Basically anything that causes that button to be pressed is a click event. So if I double click on it, it generates me a function and that's where I add my code for my button. All right, I'd really recommend have a look at all the different items that you've got here and have a look at all the events that are attached to them. And if you want to see the default kind of events, just simply double click on those items. So let's go txt um, my words, whatever. Double click on that object and it gives you the default event that most people are going to use with that object. And this time it's text changed. Okay, so when the words change inside the text box. And then you can also do the same for the list box. So lst fruit double click on it, try not to double click on the items because that's different again. And you can see that the difference, it's selection changed for the list box. I recommend go through and do that with most of the objects and just have a look at the default events that you use with them. But in a sense, what we've got here, we're now taking the power away from the programmer and giving it to the user, like I said in the last video, because the user has the choice of if they want to interact with the text box first or the radio buttons first, or even the button first. So you have to preempt those kind of things. And you also have to just be willing to give the control over to the user, okay? So let's have a look at some very basic events. I've already got the button event, so I'm gonna double click. Whoop, hey. Yes, I know. There we go, final. Oh, let's fold that back. And you can see I've already got my click event and I can quickly show a message box that says hello inside of it simple as pie and let's add something to let's say the text block he doesn't really have a common event so let's have a look at what's called the mouse enter that means when the mouse moves over the top of the object so it enters within it so i'm going to get it so and you see i made one mistake i didn't name my text block so i'm going to go back and do that quickly txb um welcome that makes sense and what I can do is when I move the mouse over it, I might change the background color. So txb welcome dot background equals brushes dot, let's just go with red. All right, and that's gonna change the background to red when I mouse over it. So let's have a look at those things. I've got two events so far and some basic code. So you can see when I mouse over that changes red. And when I click on the button, I get a message box. And the last one, let's have a look at the text box because I've already got an event with that guy. So double click on him again. Now, what can I do here? Let's change txb welcome dot text to equal txt my words dot text dot length dot to string. I know that's probably confusing, but what I'm doing there is I'm making the welcome sign at the top equal how many characters there are in my text box. So when I do that, seven. So you can see it changes and it updates every single time I enter a new character or I do anything to edit the words inside of that text box. But that's the video, guys. I hope event-driven code makes sense. And in the next video, we're going to look at XAML. But if you want to like, subscribe, and comment, you know where to find them. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.